Hi, this is Flip and John. These are photos we used for a talk we gave at the 2015 Ethos Stove Conference. The subject is the potential and principles for mud rocket ovens. In this photo, Larry Winiarski and John are standing by the rocket oven Flip and I made in 2011. The oven is still in use. It has cooked over 300 pizzas, 20 plus pound turkeys four different times, many loaves of bread, pans of roast vegetables, We've even used it as a kiln five or six times. We want to thank Larry for his mentoring. When we volunteered with Mercy Corps in Tibois, Haiti in 2012, we showed people videos of our rocket oven. They built their own homes with mud, rocks, and sticks, so they immediately recognized they had the skills and materials to build their own ovens. Sonia and her friend Nick learned how to make ovens in our barn. In Panama, they built an oven of their own on their front porch. Local women saw the potential for an oven to become a micro-business opportunity. They asked Sonia to work with them to build their own oven. They began selling bread at a local soccer match. The photo on the left is another of the micro-bakeries in Tibois, Haiti. The people in this village all eat bread as part of their diet. It used to be that all the bread came up a dusty road on the back of donkeys and motorcycles. Now there are several folks in the village who sell fresh local bread. The upper photo on the right shows clay ovens that the Eco Kalan organization in the Philippines is selling to make binka cakes and other items. In the photo on the left, I had the privilege of teaching these people how to make yeast breads. They quickly and proudly began making different shapes of rolls and loaves. On the right is another oven built in Haiti. It was built using a mold and it only took five hours to construct. They were able to bake in it immediately. Notice the racks. They can bake two cookie sheets at once. Rocket ovens heat up quickly and reach 450 to 500 degree temperatures in about 15 to 20 minutes. Conventional wood ovens take about one to two hours to reach baking temperatures. The mud ovens use substantially less wood than traditional earthen ovens. We use Kiko Denzer's wonderful book, Build Your Own Earth Oven, to design our first oven. When Kiko visited our place, he said, the amount of wood you guys use to heat your oven and bake is equal to the amount of kindling I use to start my fire. Notice the pot on the top of the oven. Another advantage is you can use the exhaust heat coming out of the oven for cooking. These are versatile, dual-purpose ovens. A well-designed conventional oven has its advantages. Once heated, they can bake a lot of food and there is minimal smoke contact with the wood. It does take a smoky fire that burns a lot of wood to heat up these high-mass ovens. A large, hot, smoky fire burns in these ovens, waiting for them to absorb or soak up the heat. When the oven is finely heated, the charcoal and ash is either swept out of the oven or into a corner, and the food is baked on the solid floor of the oven. Rocket ovens are low mass and insulating. The clay becomes insulating when 50% fine organic matter, like sawdust, is added. When the organic matter is burned out, this insulating clay mixture actually floats on water. Insulation causes the heat to radiate back into the oven so that the oven heats up quickly. Conventional wood-fired ovens are high mass and must soak up heat from the fire before the oven can begin to bake. This clay mixture is of clay, sand, and some straw, and it is not insulating. In some conventional ovens, an insulating layer may be laid on top of the high-mass oven lining, but these ovens heat up slowly because the heat has to be absorbed into the oven wall. There are two types of rocket ovens, white and black. In a white oven, the hot gases do not enter the chamber where the food bakes. The hot gases flow around the side of the chamber. These ovens are clean, but they're more difficult to build and more expensive than a black oven. Baffling is required to get even heat distribution for even baking. In this drawing, you can see how the hot gases and smoke from the stove circulate in the oven chamber, coming in contact with the food. It is essential that you use a clean burning stove, or your food will be contaminated with soot and ash. These photos show bread darkened by soot from a black oven that was too smoky. Clean stoves are essential for a black oven. Make sure the combustion chamber for your stove is well insulated and tall enough so that as much smoke as possible is combusted. Make sure to have an airtight connection between the top of the stove and the bottom of the oven. 
If there is a gap, colder air will get sucked into the oven and it will take longer to heat up. Avoid using wood with pitcher oils. Dry deciduous wood will give the cleanest burn. There are principles to follow when constructing a rocket oven. A deflector plate is suspended at the top of the oven so that the hot gases circulate in the oven. Without this deflector plate, the hot gases exit too quickly and it is difficult to heat the oven to baking temperature. In a rocket oven, there is a hole in the floor of the oven where the hot gases enter. Food is placed on a baking surface. The baking surface is supported by small short risers above the hole where the hot gases enter. Hot gases must be able to flow freely under the baking surface. Support the baking surface with 3 quarter inch risers. Another deflector plate is sometimes needed underneath the baking surface. This deflector plate prevents the baking surface from getting too hot in the center. This deflector plate must also sit on risers to allow the hot gases to flow freely. This photo shows what we just had in the drawing before. The photo shows what we use for baking surface and deflector plates in our first oven. We purchased a kiln shelf and ceramic plates at a pottery store. We've also made our own deflector plates and baking surfaces, but they can be tricky to make. The recipe is mix some fine sand and about 10% fine organic matter into good clay and dry the items slowly and carefully. The photo on the left shows an oven where there was not enough gap under the baking surface. The fire was partially smothered, causing lots of soot and greatly increasing the preheating time. Simply placing four ceramic risers under the baking surface, we were able to heat the oven to 450 degrees in 17 minutes on a day when the air temperature was 33 degrees Fahrenheit. It had taken them two hours to reach 450 degrees when the gap was too tight. Oven shapes can be all sizes. We're still learning, but our experience seems to indicate that dome shapes seem to heat quicker and bake more evenly. However, the ovens with straight sides will accommodate racks more easily. Choose a size that matches the food you would like to bake. The oven on the left is great for large items like turkeys or loaves of bread, but it doesn't toast the top of pizza as well as the shorter oven on the upper right. The oven in the lower right was made to cook three racks of casserole at a time. Larger ovens will require more firepower than smaller ones. For home size ovens, rocket stoves with four inch combustion chambers work well. Find a long stem thermometer which goes to at least 500 degrees Fahrenheit and place that in a small hole near the top of your oven. With a little practice you will find that it's easy to control the temperature in the oven by the quantity and size of wood you have burning in the stove. Pull out wood to decrease the temperature. Add a little wood or push it farther into the stove to increase temperature. It's important to know that pushing wood into the stove too fast will cause a spike of smoke. Let the tip on a new piece of wood heat up in the fuel chamber before pushing it into the flame. If you feel the wood hit the back of the fuel chamber, pull it back a half inch so that you're not blocking the flow of air from under the grate. These ovens don't need a chimney. The oven in this photo was in a bake-off. It lost. It used three times as much fuel and took an hour longer than the other ovens to bake a loaf of bread. Why? because the chimney created too much draft and was sucking excess cool air. These beautiful mud ovens melt in the rain. We suggest you build a cover first and then build the oven. Mark from Spain converted his black rocket oven into a tea lot oven. He uses a top lit updraft stove to heat his oven. Mark finds he gets a cleaner burn using a tea lud. Tea luds are batch stoves, which means they don't need tending. You can pause the video at this point to get Mark's website. In Lake High, Haiti, Eddie Fowler Linder of Responsibility Builders has used rocket ovens to transform waste, plastic, trash into durable building materials. Contact Eddie at responsibilitybuilders at yahoo.com. One of our fun projects was converting a used barbecue into a portable oven. We keep it on our back porch and it bakes delicious pizzas. We took it to the Ethos Conference and baked naan bread at the demonstration time on Sunday afternoon. On our website, you can view a photo album of how we built it. Here are some quick photos of some rocket ovens different folks have built around the world. On the left are some ovens with a shared middle wall. Because these ovens don't get too hot, an all-wood door works just fine. 
On the right is an oven in an unnamed Middle Eastern country. On the left is the mold used by people from the New Day Church in Minnesota and Haiti. They will soon be using an improved version of the mold and have promised to send us photos that we will post on our website. On the right is a photo of an oven recently built in Peru. This is a photo of our most recent oven being tested under the hood at Aprovecho Research Center. We believe these ovens have great potential. We are working with others trying to improve them and get the word out. Maybe you're ready to build your own rocket oven. For details on building a rocket oven or rocket stove, visit our website at ratioroquette.com where you'll find Picasso albums with captioned photos giving step-by-step -step instructions. If you do build an oven, please send us photos. Part of how we learn is from others. Read the YouTube description of this video for our email address. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much for your interest. interest. Take care.